Leonard, I want to know what reality is all about. And a lot of my friends like you tell me I got to know physics to, to do that. And if, where are we today in, in the progress of, of getting more and more fundamental in physics? Okay, the use of the word fundamental raises hackles. Um, who's to say that it's more fundamental to understand the proton than it is to understand life? Or who's to say that it's more fundamental to understand uh, the, the, a neutron than it is to understand the superconductor? And in fact, it really does raise hackles. When elementary particle physicists say, we're studying something fundamental, condensed matter physicists go off the, the ballistic and say, we're doing something just as fundamental. And they're right. They're right. So the use of the word fundamental is a very loaded word here, and I think we shouldn't use it. I think we should think of it differently. I think we should think of reductionism. Reductionism means understanding a thing as the sum of its parts, taking things apart into smaller and smaller and more fundamental things. Also, oh, I just used it. I said fundamental. <laughs> Oops. Reductionism more more, also raises people's More animals. and more smaller and simpler parts, parts with less uh, movable uh, structures in them. That's been one of the goals of physics, the reductionist goal of reducing things to the smallest number of parts. As the number of parts gets smaller and smaller, it seems, or as the objects get smaller and smaller, it seems that in a certain sense they get simpler and simpler and describable more and more by fairly simple mathematics. Uh, it takes a very complicated mathematics to describe a bug, I mean a, a living bug. It takes very much more limited mathematics to describe a single electron. So we go on this reductionist march down to smaller and smaller objects, and some people will use the word fundamental. Where have we gotten down to? We've gotten down to something like 100,000 times smaller than a proton, experimentally. Uh, and that's, that's remarkable, if you think Right, that's, it. that's quite remarkable that we've gotten experimentally to something like 100,000 times smaller than an electron, we got, uh, sorry, smaller than a proton. And, we're and a proton get the, is like, what, 100? Uh, the nucleus itself is like a hundred thousandth of, of, of an atom. Of an atom, yeah. So we're a hundred thousandth uh, of a hundred thousandth. Yeah, so really small stuff from the point of view of macroscopic uh, objects. On the other hand, us or we who are interested in quantum gravity are trying to get to scales a billion, billion, 100 billion, billion times smaller than a proton. And so we're inclined to think of these scales where experiment is going on as being these enormously big scales. So it's a matter of relativity. It's relative. Who's, uh, who's small and who's big? But that's what we've gotten. We've gotten experimentally to 10 to the minus uh, 16 centimeters or 17 centimeters, 17 centimeters. And we're going to push it another decade. We're going to push it another factor of 10 smaller. Probably find new structure of some sort. Uh, but, but still a long way to go. But a very, very long. very long way to go. A very, very long way to go. You use the term reductionism, which also raises hackles among perhaps a different sort. Uh, what, 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 how do you characterize that? And what, what do you, when people criticize reductionism, either from an emergent point of view, like condensed matter physicists may do, well, or, or others in the non-science world would criticize reductionism? Well, uh, my friend Philip Anderson, for example, is a hardliner about these kind of things. But I don't think he criticizes reductionism. I think what he would say is reductionism is not the only game in town. Mm. Now, reductionism is simply means you want to understand your car, first understand your carburetor. You want to understand your carburetor, understand the little springs and the nozzles in it, and just take it apart. That's all it means. It, it, it doesn't mean anything very controversial. Well, it begins to mean uh, that I can explain the entire thing, the way the car works, if I'd understand the sum of all of its parts. Uh, there is that implication, but it also may be that in under to understand the car, you have to understand principles of organization that are new principles of organization that, uh, that you wouldn't have thought about if you only thought about atoms and things. And Prin some people would not would call that something else other than reductionism. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is something else other than reductionism. It's understanding principles of organization. 
At different levels of at different where levels, they occur. At different levels, different new principles of so organization. Both are needed. And is that any less fundamental? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. And I, I would say that somebody like Philip Anderson mostly would say that, that reductionism, as I'm using the term, is just not the only game in town and is not the only thing you need to do to understand nature. And you're comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm very comfortable with that. Yeah, I'm absolutely comfortable with that. Uh, you could ask the question whether those principles of organization are implicit in the, uh, in the understanding of the very small, small things. Perhaps that's so, but so what? If it's implicit but almost impossible to understand Well, you know, without, that's, a, that's uh, a fundamental difference, though. It really is, and it's a good question you've asked because the question is, in, in principle, can you ultimately, in some ultimate science, deduce those emergent or whatever you want to call them principles of organizations from the properties at the small levels because then, then yeah. the emergence is is a is yeah. a is a is a is a question of lack yeah. of knowledge of science okay. of the so, time so then for and you example, really do have a reduction right, so then the worldview. question is can you understand a human being just as the sum of its parts well i'm not sure because i'm not sure that it makes sense to think of a human being in the absence of its environment would a human being function as a human being if it wasn't in an environment and that environment... It's an additional uh, complexity. Additional complexity. But, but, but how about a baby? I mean, before it comes into its environment. In a vacuum? It isn't going to do anything very interesting in a vacuum. Well, so, it, it's still, I think you're evading the question about whether uh, emergent properties really do have a, an independent existence that in principle cannot be predicted from the, 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 the anything you'd want to know about the... It the, may the be that to understand the human being, you have to understand the atmosphere. To understand the atmosphere, you might have to understand the planet. To understand the planet, you may have to understand the solar system. To understand the solar system, you have to understand all of cosmology. Say what you want. I mean, it's in principle, and, if you can do it. And we don't understand all of cosmology from microscopic physics. Okay, we have quantum mechanics. So I want to understand, from quantum mechanics... How are we going to get to, is it possible in principle in some ultimate science to have a reductionist, wholly reductionist view of the world where the so-called emergent self-organizing principles are in fact predictable entirely from the, from the fundamental activities? Or is there something special about these levels that, that we can never predict? I'm not sure there's something special about these levels, but I am fairly sure that the reductionist march will end and reverse itself at the Planck scale. I have absolutely no doubt that when we try to start taking apart things smaller than the Planck scale, we are gonna wind up going in the opposite direction and describing bigger and bigger and bigger things. It's part of this issue of the holographic principle that the world is not made up out of little things which fit into space in the obvious way. It, uh, there is no doubt in my mind that the reductionist march is going to end and that it's going to reverse itself and we're going to start finding that to understand smaller and smaller things, we're going to have to understand bigger and bigger things. I have no doubt about that. But down to that point, maybe it's true that we can understand uh, almost everything without uh, any new principles. I don't know. I, I think so. I think reductionism probably works at the level of from chemistry upward, for example. That's my feeling. Um, I wouldn't want to get into a fight about it, but yes, I do think that if you understand chemistry sufficiently well, you can probably understand life.